Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. As you can see, I'm not in the van. We are currently in Auckland and staying with family. So I am borrowing my friend's flat because they have this beautiful backdrop and today I'm going to talk about 20 things you don't need in your life anymore. Despite the cost of living rising, I feel as though people are just still buying and buying stuff. They are shopping as if there's no tomorrow and I know myself how easy it is to get sucked into consumerism. Even walking down the big shopping streets of Auckland the other day, I had to remind myself to not get too sucked into the beautiful displays in the windows, which is basically just plastic anyway. So today I wanted to give you some inspiration to not buy any more stuff this year. Number one is scent sticks. This is one of those things that drive me absolutely crazy. I see them in every single home, an Airbnb, or even hotel that we've stayed in recently. Even like my dental office will have them. They can be so harmful for our health because they contain perfume. And perfume is just a mashup of toxic chemicals that aren't even being declared. Indoor air quality is so important, so I definitely will never ever <laughs> use scent sticks. Number two is an item I think is often missed in these lists, and that is, I'm just lumping them all together, everything that costs less than $10 in the internet online shopping sphere. These items, no matter if they're for your kitchen or for your car or for your bedroom or for anywhere in your house, they are extremely cheap and extremely terribly made. They also just add clutter to your home. These items you often find in people's junk drawers in their kitchen and in their bathroom. And because they are so cheap, they're often poorly made and there's no really need to replace them if they break. So these products just add to this terrible cycle of consumerism. We buy them and we use them or we don't even use them and then we throw them away. And we sort of think that this is someone else's problem. But they do clutter our space and our home and they do cost money. And worst of all is that they contribute to climate change and also the people working making these items. I think it's important to remember that everything you bring into your house is made by someone. Whether that is mixing the chemicals or mixing the plastic before it goes into the molds, people are having to work with these items and they can be made of highly toxic material. So I don't believe they're adding any convenience to your life and I really don't think you need them. Number three is another pair of shoes. As a minimalist, I only own five pairs of shoes and that works perfectly fine for me. Shoes are also almost impossible to recycle, so I suggest to not buy any more shoes because most people can get along just perfectly fine with five to seven pairs of shoes and that would be absolutely more than you need. The next thing that people seem to be addicted to buying is another swimsuit. Swimwear is made mainly and almost exclusively from plastic. That's why it works so well to swim in and that's why it dries so quickly. No matter if it's made from new plastic or recycled plastic, the current regulations isn't actually ensuring that your swimwear are made from 100% recycled plastic. Before becoming a minimalist, I used to buy one to two new pairs of swimsuits before every summer season, which is absolutely insane. I feel extremely embarrassed and I wish I hadn't done that because that is so much waste. Now, I'm proud to say that I've had the same two pairs of swimsuits, one swimsuit and one bikini, for the last, I think, six or seven years. And by taking care of them really, really well, they've lasted me so well. So some of my tips for taking care of your swimsuit is to wash them in cold water as soon as you've swam in the ocean or in a pool, and then hang them to dry in the shade. The next thing is what some people call a necessity, but I really don't think you need one, and most people in Europe would agree, and that is an aircon. I recently learned about the problem of electricity in India and with the growing economy and more and more people getting into the middle class and earning more money, more people want air conditioners for their home. However, it would be impossible for us to cater for every human being or every family in the world to have an air conditioned unit in their home. Instead, not buying an air conditioner when you don't need it, making sure that we insulate our homes properly and using fans instead and airing out our homes and also being okay with being a little bit warm are all tips that I think are very good. The next thing I mentioned briefly in my past video as well, and that is decor everything. Personally, I've always been confused with home decor. They take up space, they are basically just clutter, often collecting dust, and they don't really have a use. Home decor is often also very expensive and made from plastic or other non-natural materials. I would suggest instead to decorate your home with items that you use. And if you want to decorate your home, just let it take time. Add a photograph when you get one and add a piece of furniture or an item when you find it in a secondhand store rather than buying it new. The next one, which is maybe the most crucial one, is new tech. 
I've said this before, but this is potentially the most important one. New tech is one of the most detrimental things to our climate. The people who make this tech, the people who have to deal with the tech after we just chuck it away because it doesn't work as well three years or two years or even one year later. So I would suggest looking that up in case you need some motivation to stop buying more tech. Not to mention that tech is extremely easy to find secondhand. Everything from my camera that I'm filming this in to my iPhone, it is all bought secondhand and I didn't need to buy anything new. to just have a little bit of patience and a little bit of uh, time to look around and you will find anything you might need secondhand. The next thing is fake lashes and fake nails. This one also just gets me going, so I won't talk about it too much. Fake lashes and fake nails are most often made from plastic. The health effects of these chemicals is so detrimental, and I can't believe we're not talking about it more, especially because fake nails and fake lashes are the most superficial and unnecessary item possibly in our society. It doesn't make anyone look better or feel better. It's simply just a waste of resources for just a superficial ideal that didn't even exist five years ago. And I have to admit that I also used to do this. I used to definitely buy fake lashes. I even had to use them for work when I was a performer. But for everyday people, there is no need to ever, 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 ever buy fake lashes or fake nails. And I highly wish we would discourage it as a society because of the fact that it is just plastic. And I don't think many people realize. The next one is new clothes or fashion. I would like to challenge you to not buy any more clothes this year. And I'd say just try it because how long can you go? Challenge yourself and see if you can go a month without buying any new clothes or six months or a whole year. How long does it take before you'll get so uncomfortable that you'll buy something new? Because I can almost guarantee that everyone who watches this video has more clothes than, than they need, than they practically need to survive and thrive in society. The fashion industry is so, so wasteful. So the further away we can come from supporting it, the better for our environment, for our future, and for the people who work in their industry. The next one is something I think most people don't talk about how wasteful it is, and that is gear for your hobby. Whether it's for hiking or it's for art or it's for craft, I don't think it makes sense to buy new stuff simply to pursue a creative hobby. Now I know that might not sound any fun and I think people might even get upset from hearing that they can't just buy stickers for their crafts or a new camera for their hobby photography, but I really don't think you can do that ethically. Instead, I would wait for at least a year or two before you start adding gear to your hobby. No one's gonna want some old hiking poles or a half open bag of stickers for your crafts. And that makes it really, really wasteful, especially when we then keep buying new things and keep changing hobbies and we simply consume just for our pleasure. Now, if you think about that without getting upset <laughs> that you're not allowed to consume anything, I think it can be really eye-opening to see that consumerism is not what ultimately makes us happy, but it's the pursuit of creativity. The next item is activewear. Now this might also fit in the items of clothing, but activewear is most often made from plastic. Elastane, nylon, spandex, uh, polyester, anything else I can think of is made from plastic. If your item has stretch in it, it is most, 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 most likely to be plastic. So for me, this just makes sense. And I think people miss it because I had no idea that clothes could be made out of plastic and still I started on my minimalist journey. So if you go to the grocery store and you don't get a plastic bag, then why would you buy plastic clothing? To me, this just completely makes sense and that's why I have completely stopped buying plastic clothes. The next one on the list is a bit different and that is fast food. Now this is not an item and it's actually a consumable, which I normally say is fine because we can eat it and consume it and then it just turns to waste. But with fast food, there is so much more involved. Not only is it the buildings that these companies occupy, it is the removal of local business, it is the extreme packaging that comes with fast food and also what the fast food is actually made from. Fast food is killing our society and it's also not good for the people who work with it. So if you don't wanna quit fast food for yourself, you can at least quit it for the environment or for the people who work with it. The next one is storage items. People seem to be obsessed with buying storage items. Anytime I'm in a mall or something like that, for whatever reason, the one thing I see people walk out with is storage items. People buy storage for their pet items, for their makeup items, for their home items. There is just so, 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 so much storage. These storage containers are almost exclusively made from plastic, or if they're baskets, they're often made very unethically. That's why they are so cheap. 
So buying stuff to organize your stuff isn't the way to get out of organizing in this cycle of clutter. Rather, not buying anything else, using what you have, and decluttering is how to get out of clutter. The next one is a new one on the list, and that is bed linen. For some reason, the bed linen industry seemed to have just boomed lately. All my friends have now beautiful linen, and they have not only one or two pairs, but they basically have as many pairs as my grandparents do. But the difference is my friends are all in their 30s, they don't have any kids, they don't have a spare bedroom, yet they just have so many pairs of bed sheets and linen that I don't really know what's going on. Just like with everything else, it becomes wasteful if we buy things we don't need. It's using unnecessary resources, it's using our money that we've worked very hard for, and it's just wasteful in general. So I think it's fair to say that you will have more than you need if you have two sets of sheets and linen, or two sets of linen, for each bed that you own. So I would highly recommend downsizing your closet, your linen closet, so that we don't turn into our grandparents who have these stacks and stacks of old linen that no one is using. The next one is tote bags. We have enough bags, we just need to reuse the ones we have. So if you want a trendy tote bag, I highly suggest you make one yourself or find it in a secondhand store or simply just wait till you get one when you buy something else. The next one is a funny one, which I didn't realize until we were staying with family friends, and that is condiments and sauces. <laughs> I think this is one of those shopping addictions that people have without necessarily realizing. People seem to buy, and I guess my family did this too growing up, I've just completely forgotten, but just buying condiments and condiments and condiments. They go off after a few years and people still keep them in their fridges, but they never ever use them. So I'd highly suggest to declutter your fridge and just make it feel a lot cleaner in general and also to save money is to not buy condiments. Another thing in the kitchen that I think we need to stop buying are kitchen appliances. I love using pots for cooking. I love using knives for cooking. There are so many things that you can make yourself without the need of expensive or fancy kitchen appliances. Kitchen appliances are also most often made from plastic to a certain extent and mixed with other materials like electricity or metal. So they are almost impossible to recycle. This means that any kitchen appliance you buy new once you have finished with it or someone else you've given it or sold it to have are finished with it, that's gonna go right in landfill. And that thought to me is just quite overwhelming. So try not to buy kitchen appliances and you can always see if you can call your grandparents or your parents and see if you can borrow one of theirs because I bet you they have at least one in storage. The next one I think people also forget to mention on these lists, I wonder why, and that is things that influencers tell you to buy. Whether it be stickers or keychains or makeup or t-shirts, whatever it is, you don't need it. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of the best ways to make money for both artists and creators is to sell merch. However, merch is often very different from items that you can buy and that you do buy for yourself. Most often, it's things that can be mass produced, require very little money to produce, so there's very little risk, and that you can also hike the price on to have a really big margin. That's why things like keychains, again, and stickers, and mugs, and t-shirts, you really, really don't need it. And I think if you want to support your creator, either ask them to make something that you would actually find useful, that you would use, ask them to do that, or you can also just uh, help them or support them by donating money to them. But just because someone tells you to buy it doesn't mean that you should. Which leads me on to the next one, which is something that most people I know have been literally forced into buying, and that is shampoo and conditioner. Now, isn't that crazy that people can force you to buy something? I mean, I all my friends, and I remember even my mother, were definitely pressured into buying new shampoo and conditioner from their hairdresser. My personal advice is that if your hairdresser or um, people at a spa you like to go to or anything like that, push products on you, leave a bad review and don't go back. Find someone else. Because I think it's really important that they don't push products on us. It's very uncomfortable. And also no one I know needs more shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> It seems like one of these other addictions, shopping addictions people don't have, even people who don't care about their hair. But just please, finish your shampoos and conditioners before you buy your new one. Your shower will be cleaner, there'll be less clutter, there'll be less plastic, and there'll be less waste in the world. 
The next thing is new furniture. I think it's super cool being in this house because I know that all the furniture here has been found secondhand, which is super, super easy to find furniture secondhand if you just have a little bit of time. Most of us over decorate our homes and I think there's also a pressure on people to decorate empty rooms. I've even heard people apologize to me when I visit their home. They say, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have anything in this room yet, it's empty. Whereas I think that's great because most homes are exploding and exploding with stuff. So let your decorating take time. And you actually don't need a spare bed until you have someone that comes to stay. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, which I've stopped shopping, is new souvenirs. This is a really important one because with the new opening up of travel, I think people are for sure gonna buy more souvenirs, especially that now we have a younger generation traveling that hasn't traveled in the last three years. I would always get a souvenir when I traveled in Europe with my family growing up, and it wasn't until I went on my first trip by myself that I didn't get a souvenir. It did feel a bit like empty and strange at first, but it was also so freeing. I realized that the memories were more important, but also that these souvenirs are often these days just literally imported from China. They're not made by the people selling them, and they're not helping the local economy. So I highly recommend trying going somewhere and not buying souvenirs. And there's just, it's just so beneficial to not buy things. Minimalism and not shopping has changed my life so much and I'm so grateful for it. I think a good question to ask yourself if you feel like you wanna buy any of these items or you have any other items that you tend to buy, what if everyone else did this? What if everyone else bought a kitchen appliance? What if every single household in the world bought a rice cooker? Would that be possible? How big would that pile of waste be when those cookers break? And always consider the whole cycle when you buy something, from what material it was made from, to who's made it, to where it's come from, to where it goes when you can no longer use it or when the person you've given it or sold it to cannot longer use it. I think these are really, really important questions to make and I think you'll find that your home is so much less cluttered and you have so much more money to spare on things that actually matter rather than just filling our homes with stuff. So thank you so, so much for watching. I really enjoyed making this video. My friends thought it was very funny that I was making this video because they have a lot, a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, but I'm so happy to have made this video and I really hope you liked it. And let me know in the comments below if you normally buy these things or if these are things that you would absolutely never buy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.